Hey, what up cyber heroes? You think that you need to get a college degree, some type of certification, or some crazy technical experience like hacking in order to have a career in cybersecurity? Haven't I already proved that's wrong? Well, just in case you're new, in this video, we're gonna continue in our series and talk about the day of in life of a cybersecurity auditor, part two. Hey Cyber Heroes, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Boyd Clues, an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help IT guys upgrade their jobs into a six-figure cybersecurity career. If you want to join me on this journey, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the red bell, I think that's the color, so that you're notified whenever I drop new content to help you take your career to help you take your career to the next level and earn six figures beyond in cybersecurity. All right, guys, let's get started. We're going to talk about the day in the life of a cybersecurity auditor, part two. And since that's part two, that means there's a part one. And just in case this is the first video you're watching, you definitely need to go back and watch that video because it sets the foundation for what we're going to do in this video. So you know how I roll. I'm going to give you five seconds to make that transition. One, two, three, four, five. All right, if you're here, that means that you're ready to rock and roll and you watched last week's video. So check this out. Last week, we talked about performing in a security assessment. We reviewed some security figurations on a sonic wall NSA network security firewall. Now that is step one in the process, right? We have to observe, meaning we have to put our eyes on the configurations of a system and compare them to a security framework that we're auditing against. Last week, what we used was the PCI DSS version 3.2.1. And if you're not familiar with what the PCI DSS is, it is the credit card data security standard that companies must follow if they store, process, or transmit credit card data. So what we're gonna do in this video is, we're gonna continue on with this day in the life of a cybersecurity auditor and talk about what happens after you perform that security assessment, because it's just step one. All right, guys, I'm in my computer now. And this is the security report, which it usually starts off with an executive summary, some information about the network, what we observed. And so then we get into the actual findings. Now, the findings are the things that we observe that are negative in this situation. So first of all, what we've notated is that there is a finding for a network firewall has not been installed between the internet and an internal network. And this specific issue that we found is actually a violation of PCI DSS requirement 1-2, which says build a firewall and router configuration that restricts connections between untrusted networks and any system component in the cardholder data environment. And so what we're doing here is we are explaining to the company, here's what we found, here's the applicable requirement, and then here's the risk. The lack of a network firewall limits the ability of the organization to prevent and identify or respond to malicious cyber activity, right? And so then we're explaining to them what the risk is. This could be a statement or it could be a risk matrix, like high, medium, low, et cetera. It could be there. But if you see here, we've listed this as an urgent finding, which means this needs to be fixed quickly very very quickly and then we give our recommendation a network firewall should be purchased and installed and appropriately fit configured to separate the client confidence from network from the internet and then you want to assign a due date to it and so this is what you do after you perform the information you need to go back and analyze the data because you need to determine when i see that this finding was observed in this environment what is the true risk considering that the network does not have a firewall and it is directly accessible to the internet, we deem that as an urgent finding. So this is something that needs to get some traction and needs to be fixed quickly. And so we gave it a due date of October 31st. Ideally, you wanna work with your internal teams. You need to find out who the system owner is, the, the product owner, whoever the champion is of that system, whatever language you use at your company to find out who owns it and what is the level of effort that is going to take for them to fix it. Because as the cybersecurity auditor, you don't have the ability to fix this. You only have the ability to report on it. 
So you wanna get the due date from the owner of the system and so that you can create your executive report and run that up the chain if someone is not tracking to that. So let's take a look at the second one. So the second finding on here, the settings for the router were inappropriately configured, creating a direct, a direct connection between the internet and the internal network. That's a problem. And so that problem is associated with what? PCI DSS requirement 1.3, which says prohibit direct public access between the internet and any system component in the cardholder data environment. And then again, we explain what the risk is, and then we give a recommendation and we assign it a due date. This is what it looks like when you actually perform the security assessment and then you go through and actually perform analysis on your findings and you put it into a format that you can deliver to executives so they can make a decision on what controls are going to be in place. If you notice here, we're given a recommendation. We're not telling them what they need to do or I should say how they need to do it. I like to give my clients the ability to use their own creativity to solve the problem. That's why I explain to them what the risk is and what the requirement is that they've actually fallen short on so that they can make the proper conclusions. And just again, so you know, we're not making up anything about these controls. We've pulled this control right from the PCI DSS. There's PCI DSS requirement 1.3 and there's PCI DSS requirement 1.2. They are right there so that we could show proof to those product owner showing them that yes, we have to do this. Because let's be real about it. Nobody wants to do security. It's difficult, it takes time, and generally speaking, it doesn't make companies money. And since it doesn't make them into money, why would they wanna do it, right? So this is what you need to understand. You should never, if you're taking notes, hopefully you're taking notes, never send a finding to a stakeholder or anyone without the associated security requirement that was violated because outside of the standard that you're following, that you're auditing against, you have no power whatsoever. You can't walk up to a senior manager at a company and tell them, hey, you need a network firewall right there. They're not gonna listen to you. But when you perform the security assessment and you present the data that says, hey, Mr. Senior Manager, you need a firewall between our network and the internet based on PCI DSS requirement one, two. And if we don't have this, we're non-compliant. And when we're non-compliant, that means that we could be fined lots of money and we could even lose the ability to process credit card payments. Does that make sense? See what I'm saying? The power comes from understanding the standard, understanding the risk that's in your environment and being able to clearly explain to the stakeholders what it is that they need to do in order to remediate the issue that was discovered. So guys, that's what the process looks like. We perform the security assessment, we notate our findings, and then we generate a report that aligns the risk of the discovered findings, as well as the applicable requirements from the security framework that we're auditing against, as well as the internal risk ranking system, where there's high, medium, low, critical, or urgent, so that the business actually understands how significant this problem is that was discovered. When you do this time and time again, it becomes easier, but you also add a lot of value because most people that don't work in cybersecurity don't realize the impact and risk that they actually bring to the organization. So it's important that we perform these security assessments often and that we are efficient when we document our findings as well as the risk. This is another reason why I recommend moving into this path of cybersecurity, which is called GRC, Governance, Risk, and Compliance, because I'm doing this work in cybersecurity, right? But I don't have to be technical because findings were discovered, which means something was not in place. It needs to be fixed. And because it needs to be fixed, you can't do it. Because of the principle of separation of duties, you cannot audit your own work. So I could not perform that security assessment, notate the findings, and then go back and fix it myself. People that work as cybersecurity auditors or control assessors only have read access to systems to be able to get the information that they need, not to be able to modify things that are incorrect. We leave that up to the system administrators, the network administrators, the firewall administrators. But you wanna know something funny? 
the auditor generally gets paid a lot more money, a lot more money. I have definitely simplified what this looks like because, I mean, you would think about having to review 200 plus controls on a single system. If all of those controls are non-compliant, then you're going to have a list of controls, oh my goodness, that you would have to write up. Another thing is, I did this specific risk assessment on a Word doc. Some companies are going to have a GRC system like Archer, where you're going to be able to just click on what framework that you're auditing against, select the requirement, and then just type in the risk and it'll create the report, it'll create the tracking metrics and everything else for you. Those are like some of the best companies to work at. But if you don't have that at your company, this is your opportunity for promotion. You could actually pitch the idea of you leading a project to bring a GRC system in-house and you manage the project to help establish a way of tracking in monitoring findings from security audits to completion. Managers, leaders, execs, they like that type of stuff. And how do I know? Because I am one and I've done that before in my lifetime. So that's it guys, short and sweet and right to the point. You know how I do it, the cyber hero way. This has been the day in the life of a cyber security auditor part two. So my question is for you, were you aware of this field did you realize that you could get paid a crap ton of money by reviewing configurations and then writing up risk assessments and delivering documentation while other people go and fix that? Let me know in the comments. Also, while you're in those comments, let me know what video that you would like to see next. Me and my team have some ideas, but I think the best ideas come from right here in the comments. You let me know what you want to see and we'll cook it up for you. Hey guys, if you found video, if you found video, <laughs> Uh, it's late. Whiskey after this. Hey guys, if you found value from this video, be sure to drop a heart, a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know so I can drop more content to help you take your career to the next level. All right guys, so if you want to learn the skills to become a cybersecurity specialist, specifically around payment card security, click the link in the description below, or you can head over to www.boydclewis.com forward slash GRC and apply to the Baxter Clueless Cybersecurity Training Academy to see if it's a good fit for you. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I will see you on the next one.